Hello all and welcome to the last episode of chapter 4 in the contact script program. We're actually getting through it. So 413, the UI XY pad. An XY pad, uh, so it's a, a big square that you can pull around a dot in. Very, very popular in a lot of plugin designs and now contact has added one um, very recently, which is awesome. So you can have as many dots as you like. You can create surround panners. We can do... Um, you know, cut off values or blend between sounds, use the granular side. It's, it's really cool. Uh, it is pretty compli complicated at the same time though. So an XY pad, uh, we declare it with XY and then a question mark with array and the number of elements that we'd like, essentially like the resolution. The range of each axis in the XY pad is always between 0 0.1 and 1 uh, in terms of moving around, okay? So the number of cursors or the interactive elements is defined by the size of the array, okay? Each index in the array represents one axis of one cursor, so two indices are needed for each cursor. Therefore, if we wanted uh, one mouse, we would have to have an array of size two. If we wanted two mouses, mice, we would need an array of size four, three, six, four, eight, you get the idea. The maximum size of the XY elements is 32 elements, so you can have 16 total cursors, though I imagine, I suppose that would be pretty insane to do that kind of thing. However, who knows, crazy things have been done. So the even indices of the array hold the X axis and the odd indices hold the Y axis. So index zero is the X axis of the first cursor and one is the Y of the first cursor, then two, Index 2 is the X of the second cursor and 3 is the Y of the second cursor and it just kind of flip-flops like that. Uh, it's possible to define how the XY pad reacts to mouse uh, interaction using control parameter mouse mode. So that's like if you wanted to pull it and it go inverted or um, you know even have some kind of physics to it. Uh, if you wanted to like rebuild like, maybe like sculpture in, uh, in contact. Uh, from logic, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we can also query an iMouse event type with the on UI control, um, letting it know what kind of mouse event uh, triggers what kind of behavior. Okay, so I'm going to step through this whole thing. It is pretty complicated because there's quite a bit going on, but we'll get through it because together we are computer programmers. I don't know. Uh, on initialization, we send a message, we make it performance view so that we can see it, which we don't need any of this straight away. We set the UI color to this 9DDDDDDH and we set the UI height to 350. We declare a UI XY with question mark my XY with four elements. It's actually uh, two cursors, right? Because each cursor requires two elements. And then we store the UI ID of the XY pad just so that we don't have to do that get UI ID my XY over and over again, which we're going to declare XY ID and then get XY ID to equal get UI ID, just do it once, get it over and done with. We skin the cursors, which changes them from uh, regular cursors to little boxes, okay, by doing set control parameter string. Uh, String, arr, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, X, Y, I, D, control parameter, cursor, picture, picture one and picture two. Okay, this is uh, two different types of boxes. Again, you don't really have to do this if you don't want to. Uh, we are not going to, oh, we'll do this. Yeah, why not? Uh, we're setting the control parameter uh, to show some automation IDs. Okay, so this is going to mean the first element uh, is one automation ID, the second element is one automation ID, the third element is one automation ID, and the fourth element is one automation ID. So when we were uh, fiddling with all these dots, if we pull the first element on the x-axis, we'll be controlled by this automation ID. The first element on the y will be controlled by this automation ID. The first axis on the x, sorry, the second, second element second cursor x axis will be this one and the second cursor y axis will be this one for the sake of uh sort of making it make sense we've set them so that we name the automation names to cutoff resonance delay pan and delay feedback 
So when you look at automating, and I'm doing this in logic, but you don't have to do it in logic, you can do it in anything that reads automation, uh, you'll have a, a pop-up that when you flick through the hundreds of lines of contact automation, uh, you'll be able to then control that, which is neat. We define the mouse behavior as mode zero, and then we set the control parameters to 1000 so that it doesn't uh, drag all over the place really, really quickly. We're sort of limiting that, uh, the physics of that a little bit. The position and size are not that confusing. Um, and then, so we're just setting the position X, position Y, and then the width and the height. And then we're moving the cursors to the center of the XY pad, uh, so to 0 0.5, because knowing that every value goes from 0, 0.0 to 1.0, 0, 0 0.5 being the center of the X and the center of the Y. So they'll actually be stacked on top of each other to begin with. Let's get into this monster script. Uh, it actually doesn't do anything yet, because uh, we haven't tied the behavior of these particular values or of any particular values to any functions. However, we, I'll show you how it looks in automation and uh, things like that. So jumping on in on initialization, I am going to skip uh, some of the more pointless ones. So I'm not going to make it performance view. Um, I will set UI height, or UI color rather, uh, 9DDDDDDH, and set UI height in pixels to 350. We declare a UI XY pad called my XY, and that's with a question mark. And we declare a XY ID. Okay. Uh, and we're going to set the XY ID x y i d equals get u i i d my x y just so we don't have to keep doing that over and over again um we'll skin the cursors and i'll show you what it looks like without them towards the end as well string arrangement uh, x y i d control parameter cursor picture uh, what I might do, I might just do one that's skinned and one that's not. That all kind of makes sense. Um, if I was going to skin the second cursor, I would write it like this just because, whoops, control parameter string arrangement, yid, part cursor, picture, picture two. The reason I would do this is because we need to then go to the third element of the array, which is number two. Okay, so now that I've written that and said I wasn't going to, uh, let's just leave it. So moving on, X, Y, I, D, control parameter, automation, I, D, zero and zero. Okay, so that's the first one becomes the first slot. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this because all I'm changing of these is the last bit. Uh, and I know that people get kind of annoyed when I take the time to type it out in front of them. Okay. From there, let's give ourselves a bit more space. And we set control parameter string right, to X, Y, I, D. Control parameter automation name. And we're just calling it cutoff. We don't have to call it cutoff. Uh, we don't have to call it anything. We can call it fluffy and fairy and which I might do. Let's call it fluffy one. Very fluffy. Okay, now we define some mouse behavior. Well, that's gonna annoy me if I don't fix that up. Sorry guys. There we go. So we set control parameter for X, Y, I, D, control par mouse mode is zero. Okay, so that's gonna mean it's not inverted. Parameter X, Y, I, D, oops, control par mouse behavior of the X axis. Got a little bit of drag to it. Nothing insane. Um, 
just so that we're not flying off the page all of a sudden. Uh, again, there's probably someone that could do something pretty cool with that, with uh, yeah, making it sort of more physically, make it like the, the Omnisphere XY pad where you can kind of like throw the ball around and it'll keep moving, which is pretty neat. So control parameter. So this is just defining the size. Control par position X 50 and control parameter X, Y, I, D. Our proposition Y is 50 as well, just so it's got a little bit of give on the side of the screen. Uh, X, Y, I, D. Control parameter width is 200. And the height X, Y, I, D. Control par height. 200. Okay, uh, finally, we're just going to set some defaults. So we're going to go my, uh, my XY 0, setting that to 0 0.5. So that sets the first cursor to the middle in the X axis and the first cursor to the middle in the Y axis. The second cursor to the middle in the X axis and the second cursor to the middle of the Y axis. And end on. Let's see how many times I stuffed up. Hey, the very first bit. That's unfortunate, isn't it? All right, so uh, we've got our XY axis now. So if I can pull these up and move them around, which is pretty neat, right? Now, uh, that's the XY pad for you. It doesn't really do anything else. You notice that when I mouse over it, I get some different kind of... Um, behavior. The other element that we did show was in this automation ID stuff. So if I go to contact and I scroll through all of the different variables right towards the bottom, there should be there's a, quite a number of them. Cut off, floofy, fluffy and furry. Okay. So if I grab floofy, which it might just take a second because it's still scrolling through the enormous list of things. And I wonder why it's 511. Anyway, if I grab Floofy and I kind of draw a line between, you know, zero and one and do this kind of thing. And then we loop over this spot. You should see the cursor moving around. There we go. So we can see it moving around. Now it's only moving around in one axis because the value that we've gone with because floofy or the particular automation value that it is uh, is only in one axis but if we throw it into latch mode so if we check out latch mode and we just kind of drag them all over the shop i even drag this one all over the shop if we can fight it off all right then if i get out of latch mode we can already see them reacting to some of this automation. They're a little bit slow because uh, we are trying to move a lot of different elements, but we can see each of those lanes of automation has now uh, really changed the behavior. So a pretty good way to get introduced to some of the um, automation principles and a good way to look at XY. If we wanted to get more uh, if we wanted to get an additional two more cursors, we would just hit apply again and we can see already there's, uh, or there should be another cursor somewhere, but there's not. Maybe there needs to be 10. It's probably because we haven't actually, there we are, there we go, pulling them out of thin air here. So you can have them all over the place. Um, there's probably a number of ideas that you might already be having, especially considering you can change the pictures as well. Um, which is another neat way to do it. Okay, so the XY pad, incredibly useful, uh, pretty new to contact. Um, a lot can be done with this stuff and I'm really excited to see what you guys do with it. If you do do something cool um, with any of these exercises, I would love to hear about it and give you a shout out. Um, 
because you know just chatting to people has been great so far um, and it looks like people are, are really enjoying the resource so I always like to hear that um, and I'm, I'm kind of shocked about how many sort of followers and people that are actually interested in this so that's the end of chapter four I can't really believe that we're there um, but we are there so now we're on to chapter five uh, which unfortunately doesn't seem to be as as interesting uh, but programming wise uh, pretty great so if you're not sure about how some of the syntactical stuff happens in control statements boy are you in for a treat okay uh, that's it for me for right now I will see you again next time